They may be bent and battered, but these warriors and workhorses of the air are not ready to retire. That's all that he's paint out there. And neither are the hands, bringing them back to life. And if there's any loose paint, we gotta take it off. Jim Jackson has a passion for planes. The fabric goes over here and there's a metal strip that goes in. He's one of 70 volunteers who spend one or two days a week fixing up vintage aircraft at the Painfield Restoration Center in Everett. It's always interesting to see what people did in the past. It's a nuts and bolts history of flight, a history Jim Jackson knows firsthand. My first work on planes was in October 43 in the Air Force. I was transferred from Oklahoma City to Pratt, Kansas. We got on the truck and going up and looked in between the buildings and there was a tail. What in the world is that? And it turned out to be the first B-29s that were delivered to the Air Force. And we were the first guys that had to do anything about maintaining, repairing, or anything like that. Well, the main thing is I'm trying to get the loose paint off. When World War II ended, Jim launched a career as a machinist in Seattle. He had been retired for 30 years when he landed at the Restoration Center eight years ago. I started about a year after my wife died because I needed something to keep me out of mischief. Jim is a guy that at 99 years old could work most people right under the table. He doesn't look like he's gained or shed a pound since the pictures of him back in 1942. And he has so much energy, it's just hard to contain sometimes. I'm the long jet. and short of it. Yeah, he's yeah. the short of it. Yeah. He's the young guy, I'm the old guy. Yeah. It's Tom Cathcart's anyway, job as director of aircraft job. collection and restoration to harness the volunteer horsepower here and get these planes ready for touchdown at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. Everything from the world's first commercial jet airliner, the de Havilland Comet, to Russian uh, Antonov AN-2s, uh, world's first corporate business jet, the uh, Lockheed Jetstar, and this aircraft here also, the one of two left in the world of the Goodyear built F2G-1 Corsair, or the Super Corsair. A restoration can cost anywhere from $5,000 to $500,000 and can take anywhere from two to 20 years to complete. In the past 25 years, the center has restored two dozen of these flying relics. All these things here, these joints have to be cleaned. Almost everything that gets done here is done by a volunteer. And this could be mounted down here any place it comes up. It's so much easier after you've retired and maybe you've lost uh, a loved one or your wife or your husband. And here's a place you can come and still be around the people that talk the same language as you do. This bushy is, is hung up on this bolt and contribute to the preservation of history. This is the uh, de Havilland Comet, which is the first jet transport. This part here can be mounted anywhere you want. Right now, we're trying to figure out a control for a display of a thrust reverser for the engines. This is a thrust reverser that uh, they use to slow the plane down when it lands. It's a challenge of something different every day or every week. For Jim Jackson, rescuing these aerial artworks is a way to help generations of the future discover our past. The reason it's important, I had uh, two grandsons come in and spent time with me. I want them to know what went on in the past, before the jet age. I'll get very bored sitting, reading uh, the magazines and watching TV. And all my life I've used my beat up old hands doing things. Hands on history, turning back the hands of time. If I could come down here and use my hands, use what little brains I have to help these guys out, I enjoy it. I was 99 on May 31st. I hope to be able to continue work here until I'm past 100. I'd like to spend my 100th birthday here. I've got a hearing aid that helps. I've had cataract surgery that helps. I think I can make another year.
Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.